This video is on quadratic functions and maxima and minima. So in the last section we focused on graphing uh, any functions and transformations of those functions. Now we are zooming in just on quadratic functions. So anytime the highest power of x is 2, it is a quadratic function and its graph is a parabola. So we're graphing parabolas today. Those functions can be written in two different forms, either f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, in which everything is foiled out, multiplied out, or f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. That form is called standard form, and if you were to foil that out, the x minus h squared, and then combine like terms, you would get the first form, the ax squared plus bx plus c. The a value is the same in both of those equations. It's the same a value. The vertex of that parabola is h comma k. So that's the advantage of the second form. The standard form is that it immediately gives you the vertex is h comma k. If a is positive, the parabola opens up and has a minimum value at the vertex. If a is negative, the parabola opens down and has a maximum value at the vertex. So there are two ways to find the vertex if it's not already in standard form where we can pick out h and k. If it's in the other form, we can convert the function to write it in standard form. And we would do that by the process of completing the square, which I'm sure you remember from Algebra 2, right? The other option is to find the x-coordinate of the vertex using this formula. The x-coordinate of the vertex will always be negative b over 2a. And then you can plug that number in for x to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, and then you'll have the whole vertex. So we are going to do those two different methods, one of them on the first example and the other one on the second example. So on the first one, we're going to rewrite the function in standard form by completing the square, and then we'll be able to pick out the vertex. So here is that example. Let f of x equal 2x squared minus 12x plus 23. Express f in standard form, sketch its graph, and find its minimum or maximum value. So here's how we complete the square on this function. First thing we need to do is factor out the a term, factor out the 2, but only out of the first two terms, out of the x squared and the 12x, which will obviously make that no longer 12 once we factor out the 2. That will now be 6. And then leave yourself a space, close the parentheses, and put the plus 23 on the outside. It just kind of hangs along there. The point of completing the square is so that this set of parentheses will factor as something squared. So the way we come up with that third term, if you remember from Algebra 2, is to take the b, which is negative 6, so b over 2 squared. That makes, for us, negative 6 over 2 squared, which would be negative 3 squared, which is positive 9. So what we are going to add inside the parentheses there is a positive 9. But if we added a 9 inside the parentheses, then we really added 18 to the function because that 9 is multiplied by the 2 that's outside the parentheses. So if we added 18 to the function, we have to keep the function balanced. And the way we do that is to also subtract 18 from the function. And we'll do that on the outside, all the way on the end. So what we really have done is added 0 to the function. We added 18 and then subtracted 18. But that allows us to factor this set of parentheses as x minus 3 times x minus 3, or x minus 3 squared. Add the 23 and the negative 18 to get a positive 5 on the outside. So that is our function f of x in standard form, 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 5. We've expressed it in standard form, and what that allows us to do is immediately pick out the vertex of the parabola. It's 3 comma 5. So the number in parentheses you take the opposite sign of, but the number on the outside you take its sign. So it's positive 3 and positive 5. Let's graph that. Put the 3, 5 on the axes. We know this parabola is going to open up 
because the a value, which here is the two that's on the outside, is positive, so it's gonna open up. And well, the way we'll graph the rest of this is to plot a point. The easiest number to plug in, I think, usually, is a number that is one away from the vertex. So the vertex was when x was three, we're gonna plug in four for x. And let's plug it into this standard form right here. Four minus three is one, one squared is one, that one times the two is two, plus five is seven. So when x is four, y is seven. Let's graph that point. Because parabolas are symmetric, once we have that one point, we actually have another point, the one on the other side of the vertex. So if we want one to the right of the vertex, let's go one to the left of the vertex and we'll be at the same height. That means when x is two, y is also seven. And once we have those three points, we have enough to sketch the parabola. So we've expressed it in standard form, we sketched the graph, let's find its minimum or maximum value. Well, this parabola has a minimum value, and that minimum value is five. It's the y-coordinate of the vertex. It has no value less than five. So it's a minimum value of five, write it exactly like that. So that's one way to find the vertex, is to complete the square and put it in standard form. Let's use the other way to find the vertex, and you can decide which method you prefer. Let g of x equal 5x squared minus 30x plus 49. Express g in standard form, sketch its graph, and find its minimum or maximum value. So the same set of directions that we just had, but we're going to find the vertex in a different way. Instead of completing the square, we're going to use this formula, that the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. b is negative 30, so this is positive 30 over 2 times 5. a is 5. So we get 30 over 10, which is 3. The x-coordinate of the vertex is 3. How do we find the y-coordinate? We plug in the 3 for x to find its y-value. So we're going to find g of 3. g of 3 is 5 times 3 squared minus 30 times 3 plus 49. Okay, 3 squared is 9, times 5 is 45, 30 times 3 is 90, so minus 90 plus 49, 45 minus 90 is negative 45, plus 49 is 4. And that means the vertex is 3 comma 4. Once we have the vertex, we can then write it in standard form, which we are asked to do. So g of x equals, you take the same a value you had in the original form of the equation, so that's 5, then you put parentheses, it's x minus h squared plus k. So x minus 3 squared plus 4. That's our function in standard form, where h comma k is the vertex that we already found. Let's graph this, so we start with the vertex of 3 comma 4. We plot a point. Again, we're going to pick one that's just one away from the vertex. So let's pick x equal to 4. Plug in 4 for x. 4 minus 3 is 1, 1 squared is 1, 1 times 5 is 5, plus 4 is 9. When x is 4, y is 9. Plot that. Plot its symmetric points that so go one on the other side of the vertex at 2, 9. Sketch the parabola. This parabola has a minimum value of four, the y-coordinate of the vertex. Minimum again, because it opens up. And we know it's gonna open up because a is positive, that positive five we have. All right, some more practice. Just find the maximum or minimum value of the function. You don't need to graph it f of x equals x squared plus 4x. We can either complete the square or we can use negative b over 2a. I generally prefer to use negative b over 2a. It's up to you though. So I'm gonna do x equals negative four over two times one, which would be negative four over two, which is negative two. We find the y coordinate by plugging in negative two for x. So that's negative two squared plus four times negative two. That is four minus eight, which is negative four. So the vertex is negative two, negative four. Does this parabola open up or down? It opens up because a is a positive one, 
If it opens up, it has a minimum value. And that minimum value is the y coordinate of the vertex, so negative 4. That's all we needed to find. On number 4, the h of x equals negative 5 plus 4x minus 2x squared. Let's rewrite that in a more acceptable form, negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 5. And then we'll use the fact that x equals negative b over 2a to find the x coordinate of the vertex. Well, b is 4, so it's negative 4 over 2 times negative 2, because a is 2. So negative 4 over negative 4, which is 1. Plug in 1, find h of 1. Get negative 2 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1 minus 5 is negative 2 plus 4, which is 2, minus 5 is negative 3. The vertex is 1, negative 3. This parabola, though, opens down because a is negative 2. It's a negative number. It opens down. That means we have a maximum value of negative 3, the y-coordinate of the vertex. A word problem. Most cars get their best gas mileage when traveling at a relatively modest speed. The gas mileage capital M for a certain new car is modeled by the function m of s equals negative 1 over 28 s squared plus 3 s minus 31, where s is some number between 15 and 70. s is the speed in miles per hour, and capital M is measured in miles per gallon. What is the car's best gas mileage, and at what speed is it attained? Well, let's think about this function we've been given here. This function has a variable whose highest power is 2. That means it is a quadratic function. That means this graph is a parabola. We know something about this parabola. We know that it's going to open down because a is negative 1 over 28. If it opens down, it has a maximum value. That maximum value will be the maximum of m, and m is the gas mileage. The maximum gas mileage is the best gas mileage you can get, right? So. The car's best gas mileage is going to occur at the vertex of this parabola. The speed at which it is attained is really the x-coordinate of the vertex, because x is s here, which is our speed. So let's find the vertex. With that fraction, I certainly don't want to complete the square, because I'd have to factor out a negative 1 over 28, and I don't want to do that. So we'll use negative b over 2a. That's what s is going to equal because s is our variable here. So negative 3 over 2 times negative 1 over 28. 2 times negative 1 over 28 is negative 1 over 14. Negative 3 divided by negative 1 over 14 is negative 3 times 14 over negative 1. The negatives will cancel. It'll become positive. 3 times 14 is 42. So s is 42 at the vertex. That means 42 miles per hour, because s was the speed. That is the speed at which the best gas mileage is attained. So let's find that best gas mileage by plugging in 42 into the function to find m when s is 42. So negative 1 over 28 times 42 squared plus 3 times 42 minus 31 which is, of course, 32. That is a value for s, so 32 is miles, I'm sorry, that's a value for m, so 32 is miles per gallon. That is the best gas mileage, so 32 miles per gallon, which we get at 42 miles per hour. That answers the question for us. That is the y-coordinate of the vertex and the x-coordinate of the vertex. Parabolas have either a global maximum or a global minimum because there is no other point on the parabola which exceeds that value. If your parabola opens up, there's no point lower than the vertex. That is a global minimum for that entire function. If the parabola opens down, there's no point above the vertex. That is a global maximum for the entire function. Some functions, though, have local maximums or local minimums. And really, the plural of maximum is maxima, and the plural of minimum is minima. 
So a local maximum value is the highest point on a graph in its nearby neighborhood, so in an area around itself. If you look at this function here, this point up at the top here is a local maximum. It is not the highest point for the function because the function keeps going higher than that on the right hand side over here. But in an area around itself, it is a maximum value. So it's called a local maximum. This point here is a local minimum because in an area around itself, it is the lowest value, even if the function keeps going lower than that on the left side. That is a minimum for this little area around itself. So let's use our calculator to find the local maxima and the local minima of the function, rounding them to two decimal places. So our function is f of x equals x cubed minus 8x plus 1. Let's go to the calculator. y equals x cubed minus 8x plus 1 graph. There's the function. Notice it keeps going down on the left hand side, it keeps going up on the right hand side, but we do have this hump thing up here which will be a local maximum and we have this trough thing over here which will be a local minimum. The highest point in its area, the lowest point in its area our calculator can find those values, can calculate them for us. The way we have it do that is to go second trace. So we're going to the calc menu, second trace. And these are all the things that our calculator can calculate from the graph. So if we want to find that, that hump thing that was on the left, let's go to maximum number four. And it's going to ask us three questions because some functions have more than one maximum or more than one minimum and it wants to know which one we are seeking, which one we want it to calculate. So we have to give it this little region in which we want it to look. So it asks us for a left bound. Do you see that cursor flashing in the middle? We need to move that to the left of the point that we want to find. So I'm going to use the arrow keys and just move this to the left of where I want to be and anywhere to the left is fine so that's good there I'll click enter then ask for a right bound so I have to move it to the right of the point that I want and that's good enough click enter then it asks for a guess just in case there's more than one thing in the region in which you've defined it as long as you've chosen your left bound and right bound well you it won't matter what you guess just click enter right away and then it tells you the maximum is when x is negative 1.632992 and y is 9.7092969. So the maximum value is the y coordinate, 9.71, if we're rounding into two decimal places. So we go back, we'll say it has a local maximum value of 9.71. Now we also know it has a local minimum value. Let's go find it back to the calculator. The local minimum value is going to be down here. So we go to second, calc, choose number three, minimum, left bound. So we're going to move this over so it's a little closer, but still to the left of the point that we want. That's good. Click enter, right bound, you move it over. It goes to the right of the point that you want. Good enough. Enter. Just click enter again for the guess and it tells you y equals negative 7.71. So we go back, local minimum value of negative 7.71. Because our graph keeps going up and keeps going down, we're not going to have any other local maxima or local minima, which together, by the way, are called local extrema. We won't have any other values for our function like that. That's it.